Hi everybody, welcome to Randy's Road Life. Here is another video for you. Uh, pertinent information that you might need to know, may want to know, and may be able to use <clears throat> in your lease purchase uh, business. Now, if you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe, hit the bell notification. I would love to have you as, uh, <clears throat> as a subscriber, uh, a sharer of knowledge, and hopefully uh, we can grow with one another and, and learn some new things, okay, along the way. So with that, here and again, there's a title, Lease Purchase. Uh, in a lease purchase, it, and like I have said many times, it is a, a partnership, right? There is a business arrangement between you and a company who has a truck for you right to lease to buy it's a lease to own and so you enter into a contract and it's supposed to be a partnership okay and i would just like to add this um video is inspired by a truck trucker friend of mine named trucker todd on youtube he has his own channel uh and he is uh have been experiencing issues with dart transit so uh, that's not to say Dark Transit is a bad company or anything like that. I'm not going to smear that. Uh, he's a, a pretty good authority uh, on Dark Transit. He's been there for quite a while, and he's done a lot of videos uh, dealing with Dart. So if you want to know anything about Dark Transit, go to Trucker Todd on YouTube, and he will uh, enlighten you. But anyways, in his plight uh, with Dart, it's like any other company, okay? You're supposed to be in a business relationship right partnership but are you in a partnership because a partnership is 50 50 here they put in 50 i put in 50 and if we don't if both of us do not come together with our full share in the partnership there is not a hundred percent and so uh something is going to fail something will break and the vast majority of all these companies right uh, just about every company I've ever been to or heard of or did research on, they do not treat you like a partner. They still treat you like you're an employee. You're just buying the truck or trying to buy the truck. That is the hope is that you buy the truck. That is sometimes the gimmick is you to buy the truck. But really, the company is just selling you liability. Okay, you're, they're selling you their liability in the truck because that means they don't have to take the liability of the truck. You do. The, you assume all liability. And so uh, they treat you like an, more like an employee than a business partner. Right? And so when, you deal, so when you're dealing with like Trucker Todd situation, you're dealing with financial issues with the company and they're saying, well, our software is kind of quirky and things like that. It doesn't always work all that well. Uh, the problem resides in the not just the inability to work it out on their part, it's blatant, you know, but also it, it's like the company has a, a, a narcissistic culture in a way and uh, how they deal with the drivers. And so that's why it's not a 50, 50 partnership in, in, in most of these cases, in most cases it's more like a 80, 20 or a 90, 10, right? They treat you, still treat you like you are an employee. Cause if, you do something and you owe them money, they will take it out of your settlement immediately. But when they owe you money, you find out that that is completely opposite. All right, because it might take you weeks, even months to get what you're owed. Okay, so there's an imbalance here. And in Trucker Todd's case, uh, what he has done right is communication. He has done a lot of communication. When communication does breaks down what he does, and he he posts his videos and his experience uh, in the industry on YouTube. That's what he does because even through his experience, whether positive or negative, we learn from this. It's not just Dark Transit who does this. A lot of all these companies do this thing. You know, there was one instance where. Uh, I had to have two load bars for a load that I wasn't going to get back. This is here at 22nd Century. I wasn't going to get these load bars back. So I wasn't going to use my personal load bars. 
right? So what happened is a 22nd century uh, sent me to a truck stop, gave me EFS code to buy two load bars, which I did. And then those got sealed in the trailer because it was a drop and hook, right? They have a customer out in Golden, Colorado, which is Miller Coors, right? In Golden, Colorado, and it goes to Elkton, Virginia to uh, another Miller place. And so I wasn't going to get those little bars back. And I was told that they were going to, uh, uh, that I wouldn't be charged for it. I was charged for it, but they recompensated me the very next week. So I didn't, I didn't really have an issue at all. They fixed it. They actually gave me a little more money than they were worth. I'm fine with that. I was been fine with just getting what I was owed back. Now, I mean, uh, uh, I, I never tried to be irrational about anything or unreasonable, you know, Let's be fair with each other and give each other uh, the proper due, okay? So that's what's expected in a partnership. A lot of these lease companies, you got to be very careful because they're not looking at you like a business partner. Because if you owe your partner money, right, do you not pay him? Because, I mean... He is also making you money. Okay. So as truck drivers and at least purchase, we're making the company money. We're making them money. They have no liability on the truck anymore. You know, a lot of times we pay for these trailers. And so they don't assume all, all the liability on the trailer. You know, so when it comes to that, we have reduced their overhead by a very significant margin right there are a few things they're liable for but that's it that's it it's very it's very minimal and so you know the communication aspect you know it has to go be able to go both ways now there are some prissy prima donna truck drivers out here that just cry about the little things you know if the company owes me 32 bucks then i want my money why because i have a family and every dollar counts. Now, am I going to get completely bent out of shape about it? Nah, not really. But I'm still going to want my money. This is that, that this is a business arrangement. Okay? And they want all their money because they will take it out of my settlement. And I want all my money. Right? It's fair. So, give me what is due to me. Right? Don't give me what is uh, not due. I want what is due. Because this is fairness. Now, we enjoy when we get more than what we're supposed to have. All right? So, there's a flip side to that, you know. But I'm not out here trying to be irrational or unreasonable about any of this. I just want what is fair and rightfully mine. And then we can move on about our day as business partners. It's It does not ever have to come to me telling you, uh, all right, this is my last load. I'm going to turn the truck in. Uh, where do you want me to put your trailer? You know, and unfortunately, companies don't seek resolution until it comes to that time, until they see you park the truck. Then they want to start contacting you. Well, what can we do about this? What can we do about that? Let me let me give you a very quick scenario here, a true scenario. One company I was quitting, uh, and... Uh, I, I did not like the truck I was in. It was a it was a bad deal. Uh, the truck was very, very um, overpriced and over-evaluated. And so when I turned the truck in, they met me at the yard, right? The owners met me at the yard with a brand new, just off the, the, um, the dealership lot, Volvo 860. Right, a brand new Volvo 860. Now, I don't know if, how many of you know about these Volvo 860s, but they're really nice. They're really big inside and have a lot of space and stuff like that. It's what a lot of companies use for uh, team driving because of all the space they have in them. So that's what they met me with. It was a brand new one and only had a few miles on it. And so they wanted me to get in it and sit in it and look at it. And, you know, they, they, wanted, they want, really wanted to entice me. Right, and what entices a, a truck driver better than a brand new nice truck? Right, I mean, 
I was impressed with the truck. I, I liked the truck. But it didn't entice me or make me want to stay. Okay? Because we you have to stand your ground. You have to know what you're not going to accept and what you're going to accept. So there are, there are levels here. You have levels that are reasonable, unreasonable, right? And so when things are reasonable, everything's fine. You and your business partner are getting along great. Then there are things that happen that are unreasonable, okay? And then the communication has to occur. And hopefully there could be a, a, um, a fair resolution, all right? But what happens when there is no fair resolution for you? What do you do, right? Some guys just take it on the chin and move on to the next unfair, unreasonable circumstance happens, right? At some point, it has to stop, okay? So you either stick your ground in all fairness as a business partner to be treated fairly, or you just get ran over like a company driver that you're not. You're not a company driver. And we have to get out of that mindset that we're that we have we're working for a company. You are not working for a company. Trucker Todd does not work for Dart. He works for himself. He works for his wife. He works for his home. He does not work for Dart. He works with Dart. Okay. Dart provides him something very simple. They provide him an authority to run under. Dart Transit's authority. Right? They provided him a truck to lease to own. Right? So when he got in that, he signed the, the contracts and everything else for that truck. He assumed the liability of that truck. All right. And so they entered into a, a, a partnership. This is a business arrangement. Right? And each side has a part to play. So it's important that we as uh, lease purchase drivers, you know, owner operators, you know, lease to own as an operator, it's important that we always do our due diligence. We always do our part we, in, in all fairness. You know, we have to be objective about these things because, you know, I can be petty. I'm sure you can be petty, you know, and it happens. And, uh, so I've been here at 22nd century for a little over two months now. And, uh, I've been petty. Um, and, but I, I try to be as reasonable as possible, you know, and keep myself grounded because I know I have to work with other human beings like myself who are flawed. I'm flawed. They're flawed. We're not perfect. We're not better than one another and we're not inferior to one another. And so I have to keep uh, a, a level mindset here so I can be fair to the person who dispatches the loads, who looks for loads for me, because then he has to call me and say, hey, I got this load, I got this load. What do you think? Here, you know, And he gives me all the particulars because he knows what I like and as far as the particulars are concerned. So he has learned over time to do that, to give me the certain, give, give me all the information that I want. Okay, because I'm not like every driver. You're not like every driver. We're all so diametrically different from one another because what might concern me will not concern you. All right, so, and dispatchers have to learn those things. And when you have several drivers you're dispatching for, you, you have to manage this. And we as, you know, drivers have to understand that these guys have a job. And this is a business arrangement. It's a, it's a business arrangement. So we have to treat him fairly and understand what his job is, not just our own, right? And so like in Trucker Todd's situation, uh, when you watch the, his videos and stuff about, you know, his uh, predicament with uh, Dart Transit and how they, they failed in their treatment uh, with him and their failure in fairness and good business practices doesn't make them a horrible company. Believe me, there are way worse companies than that, right? It doesn't mean if you go there, you're going to 
they're going to do the same thing to you. Any company would do that to you. You're not safe. Anywhere you go, any company would do that to you. This company could probably do it to you, right? I haven't seen it yet, but I'm not going to put it past anybody. We have to be fair about all these things. So far, I've been treated great. I have no complaints. Uh, so with that, if you haven't already done so, please like the video and subscribe. Leave comments and uh, concerns or whatever that you may want to uh, address. Uh, share this on other platforms, things like that. And let's just make drivers aware that when they get into the lease purchase arena, they have all this good information to draw on so they can make good decisions, particularly the company they choose. That is the most important decision in a lease purchase, the company you choose to partner with. All right, everybody, that's it for now. Hope you guys have a blessed day. Peace.